Hey, welcome everybody to Monday Night Fire. We're coming to you live right now from Barnum Cowboy Church, just north of Mountain Home. We're in the Chuck Wagon Cafe, and got a little gal here with us tonight. We we're really excited about being on the Monday Night Fire show with us. Katrina's going to join us tonight, and this is Megan Hughes, right? Yeah. Did I get it right? Yeah. Megan Hughes. And you're a part, you're actually a part of our Wednesday night lift. Yes. Where that Katrina does and everything. Mm -hmm. That's a deal you bring out your friends and stuff. You got a friend over there, you know, hanging out. So you got a friend. Yeah. So. I still have to friends. I'm getting Yeah, that's okay. So anyway, this is her first time to be on a camera. <coughs> so we're going to encourage her a little bit. How old are you, Megan? I'm 17. 17 years old. Wow, that's old, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we wanted to have you on the Monday Night Fire to share your story. You're, pro you're probably one of the most impressive young ladies that Katrina and I have really been around. Just to get to know you and, gosh, you, you rodeo, right? Yeah, I've been rodeoing since, I well, started in 2019, but I had a dream of it my whole life. You dreamed of your whole life. And you also ride rough stock, right? I started bronc riding in 2019 along with it. My brother broke his back and I started rough stock riding right after that. So that was encouraging to see your brother broke his back. Oh, I want yeah. to do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I always wanted to do it and it was a night paid for, so I just did it. So so you like bronc riding? Yeah. And what else do you do in rodeo? Um, I've just, I've done uh, bronc riding. I've gone on bulls. I did barrel racing for two years straight and like a half a year until i started just going to bronx mm. <clears throat> but so you, then i did like poles and stuff like that but i've never roped or anything so play day stuff yeah. things like that and you're a part of our buckle series we do out here uh one saturday a month and we have our tuesday night church in the dirt you come a lot off and on to that and be a part of that church in the dirt though was a big thing for mm -hmm. you wasn't it yes that was actually what started my journey that's what started your journey i love your little comment right there so I remember last summer and there was a night that my little wife started crying because she was videoing it and uh, we're out there and doing our stuff and then it's time to preach a message and a friend of mine, Pastor Rick from Ava First Baptist Church was here and uh, I remember I preached a message and I gave an invitation to receive Christ. And I'll never forget Katrina started crying. She's, uh, I just saw her reaction because I'm like, if there's one here tonight that you'd like to receive Christ as your Savior tonight, just raise your hand so I can come to you. And hands started just going up. I said, there's one, two. I got up to eight. My wife's over crying because eight people at one time are coming to Christ. And you were one of those girls that night. Yes, sir. And uh, and so Pastor Rick, I'm like, Pastor Rick, get out here because him and I are pals. And, and uh, I knew he knew the, the plan of salvation. I knew that he would help. And he just jumped in there and got all you girls and everybody around. And I kept visiting with the rest of the people that night. And, uh, and so you prayed that night to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? Yes, sir. That was the night I kind of realized that I wasn't going down the path I wanted and I wasn't following Jesus like I'd like. And I never really had a religion. I didn't really grow up in a religious house. But when I heard everything you guys have said and everything you guys have speech or talked about him to me and to everybody and just the way you guys have told me about him and stuff and reading the Bible, it just makes me believe more and more every time. And so you knew you needed help. I did. And so that night, you, you took a courage, courageous step, raising your hand. And Pastor Rick shared that message with you guys, how to do that. And um, and then from then on, you kind of hooked on to more stuff out here. Yeah. And then, I, was, I was only coming to Tuesday night to tune up my little three-year-old at the time. I really had no plans on going down a journey to follow Jesus. But <laughs> if I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's, that's, that's exactly, but, that's great. <laughs> That's you what guys, we want to hear. So. I mean, it kind of turned from a fun thing into a lifetime. That's awesome. And then um, I remember another Tuesday night, we were because the first time we were on this end of the indoor arena, and for you that are watching and never been to Barnum, 
Cowboy Church in Arena. We have an indoor arena. It's really a nice little facility we have here. And we use it to glorify our Lord Jesus with. And so then I remember a few ni weeks later, I'm down at the other end preaching down there. And I looked at you, and you're just bawling. Yes, sir, and I'm not really a crier. It was that night I was listening really hard to you, and I was listening to everything you had to say. And for some reason, that message, it hit me deep, and it made me realize that I had gotten saved. I had asked for him to save me, and I had asked to be a child of God, and I was not taking that step. I wasn't taking that step forward that I needed to take, and that night I decided I needed to take that step. You got baptized, didn't you? I got baptized on a Tuesday night. We did it right there. You came forward and you prayed. And I, did, you, did, did you talk to Katrina that night some, or was it me? I don't remember. I think I talked to just you because yes. I... I really, I really get nervous, or I really kind of freak out if I cry in front of people. So I had to kind of get up to you, and I was like, okay, like listen, like this is serious. I need it. I need this to happen right now. And you made that commitment, and right before all the people here on Tuesday night, luckily we had the tank ready. And <laughs> it was cold. It was cold. Water. <laughs> yeah, you have to get on the Michael out there for that. He didn't have it heated for you, but uh, so. Uh, so you got baptized that night. What did it feel like for you after you came up out of that water? Was it something different? It was something different. And if I'm going to be honest, I've had a different outlook at life since that day. Um, I've I've kind of looked at everything happening in my life as something that he's put there. Like, he's helping me. He is leading me. He is showing me the way. And he is put, like, putting things in front of me to make me know not to do those things. He is showing me what I can and can't do in life. And he's bringing me down the path he wants me on. Wow. <laughs> that's what, that's, Katrina and I couldn't wait to get you on this show. Because for a 17-year-old young lady, we are so impressed with you and your devotion to your faith. You know, because it's real. And if anybody knows you, they can see your faith. And, uh, I mean, Frank and Randy are so proud of you. And they're watching probably tonight, too. So you can say hi to Frank and Randy. Yeah. Hi, Frank and Randy. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, you're kind of a Randy. You know, Randy was raised in a Christian home and, and was young as a Christian and was into horses and everything. And and uh, I think that, you know, with her, she poured a lot of her heart into this Tuesday night, her mm -hmm. and Frank. And they, you're, and you, you, uh, you touched their heart too because they've seen not just you come to Christ, but what you've, by your believing and, and your faith, you've brought a lot of friends to church. Mm -hmm. Like six or seven. Six, yep. And they've came to Christ. Yes. So, you think you want to talk to her about on no. that? My mm -hmm. wife's going to be quiet tonight, mm -hmm. she said. No, I'm going to start crying. I wanted her to be here. <laughs> I wanted her to be here since you're in her youth ministry here and everything. and and uh, Because I know how proud Katrina is of you, too. Mm -hmm. And I know you call us grandma and grandpa now. <laughs> so... But as as you think back, uh, you had other friends that didn't want anything to do with Jesus. And they had, I think a few of them had come out here with me, and they showed no interest in it, and they just kind of talked bad. And I, I honestly left that friend group because that was not what I wanted in my life. And those were not the people I wanted around me. I needed people that would help me in my journey, not take me away from my journey. Good going. My gosh. I'm just, <laughs> are you okay? No, but I will be. Anything you want to say to her? No. My wife's almost been tears over here. I'm this proud of be you. A, <laughs> she you. is. I mean, you've done so much and so, I mean, this was August, right? It was, I think it was in August. Of yes. last year. And you've already brought six or seven of your friends to Christ. And then there was someone else one night you brought, your sister. My sister, yes. Actually... With her, I had just prayed for her. She was always the type of person that would never, like, she was like, I don't believe in him and stuff like that. She put it out there that she did not believe. And so I wasn't going to push it upon her. And so I just prayed for her, and I prayed for her, and I kept asking. And the more and more I asked, the more she started to want to come to church. And I never thought she'd want to be saved, but the night she did, it just... <laughs> and I'm not even going to lie, he's helped her out a lot too. He has, hasn't he? 
I mean, I got to pray with her when she opened her heart to Jesus. We need some napkins up here, <laughs> Mike. You want to help us out? For you watching, this this is pretty emotional because we've come to love this little girl and and like one of our own kids here. My wife's got a large group of girls Thanks, in our youth group, and uh, that are just very we're just very proud of them. And uh, wow, well, that's you know, uh, I can only think of what God's sitting up there in heaven, looking down at you and smiling. He's mm -hmm. so proud of you. And because I'm gonna be honest with you, sis. I've been doing this for a long time, and since August to March, how long is that? Eight months? Six months? You've brought more people to come to Christ than some people have done their entire life. I just, I just try to talk to them about, I mean, I just tell them about the church. I tell them about what we do here, and, like, I, I normally go home and I tell them about the message Katrina was speaking that night. I tell them, like, I go into my Bible, I open it up to exactly what we were studying, and I tell them all about it. And that's how I got my sister here and a lot of my friends, too. That is amazing. It's, it's real for you. Jesus is real. Yes. The saint's just some I mean, it's, fad, is it? it you, can, you can feel his presence. I mean, in my body, like, when we pray, I can feel his presence. Well, the Bible calls that the Holy Spirit. You have the, <coughs> the gift of the Holy Spirit at salvation, and that Holy Spirit is moving through you, and you're allowing Him to lead you. You're not arguing. You're not allowing fear to get a hold of you. You're just focused. And, and you know, I'm, that's just so awesome, and I'm so proud of you. And, uh, and I, I hope that so many people listen to you tonight that, you know, you're just allowing the Lord to lead your life. And you're making choices as a 17-year-old girl that I know people in twice your age that don't make those good choices about their friends, who they hang out with. Because, you know, one of the things Randy talks about all the time is you are who you hang out mm -hmm. with. Remember That's those right. messages mm -hmm. she'd give? You are who you hang out with. So you're, you're making choices to help your focus stay on the path of Christ. And to those that are not focused on that path, you're not, you're just not, you're not going to be mean to them, but you're just going to go forward with those who want to walk with Jesus, right? Yes. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about Megan. You're 17 years old. You're a Christian. You're very active in Christianity, your faith. You come to Wednesday Night mm -hmm. Lift. You bring friends out here on Wednesday Night Lift. Uh, you're active in the horse world. So tell me a little bit, what does Megan... So, let me think, you're 17, so you go to school? I'm actually homeschooled. Homeschooled, yes. okay. So, what do you want to do with your life, you think? If I'm going to be honest, I would love to teach kids how to ride because watching younger kids come in knowing nothing and they leave with the love of horses and they leave with knowing a lot more about the animal and that animal brings a lot of people, like, it's like therapy and... Like, when the world gets hard, that animal's always there. And I've seen a lot of kids growing up. I've helped a lot of people learn how to ride and stuff like that. And I've seen how much it changes their, men like their mental state and, like, how much it can change. Like, if it wasn't for my horses, I'm just going to put it this way. If it wasn't for my horses, I wouldn't have come out here. A horses gives, I mean, they just give so many people different opportunities. And a lot of time... They, I mean, they brought me to Jesus. They brought me to Christ. They, they showed me the way, and they kind of helped me out. And I think, honestly, teaching kids stuff like that and bringing them, because if they have animals rather than, like, video games and stuff, they have wow. a reason to look out to the world and be outside and do things. And I also really, really, really enjoy training colts and working with horses. So you want to be, uh, like, a professional trainer, mm -hmm. work with horses, work with people. And, you know, that's, that's a ministry work. You know, I love what you said that, you know, the horse brought you out here because Barnard Cowboy Church, and that's part of our mission is really reaching the people, the Western heritage culture, and peep the horse lovers, you know, uh, and so it reached you. Yes. It, regular church wouldn't have got that, would it? No. You wouldn't have went to First Baptist Church where they had the big fancy carpet and everything <laughs> like that. You, your horse probably wouldn't have wanted to go in there. They probably wouldn't let you bring your horse in there. If I'm going to be honest, I've gone to quite a few churches, and this one's the only one that has made me open my eyes and actually want to follow Christ. <laughs> the only one. I have gone to all the churches around Mountain Home and around Flippin' and all around me. 
This is the only church I've stayed at. I've only gone one time to every other church. So you found something here. I found something here, and I feel like it's real. And I feel like you guys help me every day, whether I'm here or not. You guys help push me push through and follow Christ the right way. Amen. Amen. Anything yet? Nope. I don't think Kimberly Ann, I don't think Katrina's going to say anything over there. And, uh, She's touching Roy and Melanie's heart right now, and they're crying with her. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> did you meet Roy and Melanie? Yes, yes I did. Yeah, aren't they super? Yes. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, they need to move here, hint. And, uh, but, so, I sit there and I think about, you know, 20 some years in ministry and so many people that, you know, have come to Christ and then they just walk away, you know. I'm praying that you don't ever walk away. I'm, you know, I just, you know, Trey and I have, she's, she's more than I, has gotten really close to you girls. There's one back there. <laughs> And uh, and you know she's kind of like a mom, and she well, what do you call her? Clearly a grandma. Grandma, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we just she keeps a good eye on you guys, and she's always trying to stay in touch with you guys, make sure you're okay and stuff. That you have what you need, you know. Except for the oil change, did you get that done? Uh, uh oh. I went to Walmart and it took two and a half hours. Okay. So I didn't. Oh my goodness! Did you see that? They're talking about something here. <laughs> so. So you're 17, and your focus is Christ. You want to be a professional horse trainer, and you want to help kids. Have you ever thought about the different types of ministries? I mean, look at Bar None. Uh, look how God uses Katrina in an arena. Look how God uses Randy in the arena when she was here with us all the time. You know, she moved over to Joplin now, yeah. her and Frank, and uh, we miss them dearly already. And uh, but Katrina and I are going to set times to go out there, and uh, and I believe that I believe God's going to use them out there to even build his further His kingdom, and uh, and so uh, I'm just thankful that you know we got to be a part of their life to help get them started, you know. So kind of like what we're doing in you, Katrina and I spent a lot of time with Frank and Randy because we saw the presence of God in them, and that God had a great purpose for them. And you know, Frank's he's kind of like the little angel that rides up and encourages you by yourself. Yeah. And Randy's kind of, I don't want to say this, like she's the mouthpiece. <laughs> she's going to hit me for that one. But she speaks in front of people. Yeah. And so they make a great team. And so as you think about working in horses and with children, you know, you could be a good youth minister in a church somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, was... uh, another cowboy church. Mm -hmm. Or maybe intern under this one. Ooh, that could be a summer program. That would be awesome. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Because, you know, we have two youth camps this summer, don't mm -hmm. we? One yeah. with horses, one without. Out. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, uh, we was going to give you a scholarship to come to the horse one. Katrina and I are, and so you can come and be a part of that. Because Frank and Randy is going to come back and teach that one. And that would awesome. educate you more, mm -hmm. help you out more if, it, if you need it, which we all need a little more. Yeah. So, and you think about all the different types of ministries that are out there with horses and the way that you share Jesus with your friends already, you think that might be something God may be speaking to you about? If I'm going to be honest, I feel like God is telling me that he needs me to be one of his, like, one of the people he speaks through. Because there's not that many people that would just turn into their friends and just be like, let's talk about God. <laughs> but me, I'm the type of person that I'm like, we're sitting in my room and we're bored. Let's open the Bible. Oh, really? Let's talk about God. Like, let's pray. I mean... That's honestly since the day I got saved, that has been my free time. Wow, that's good, huh? Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm proud of her. I am proud of you. Yeah, we're very proud of you. Mm -hmm. So, tell me uh, a little bit where you live at. I live in Flippin, Arkansas. I always thought that was a weird name. <laughs> I always get, are you being serious or are you just trying not to cuss? <laughs> <laughs> I always liked it when I saw the flipping Church of God. And I'm like, really? The flipping police. The flipping police. Yeah, that was good. So, uh, now you live in town. You live out in the country, don't you? I live right on the city limits. I, I have about 28 acres out in flipping. Okay. So you got some horses at home. I have six horses. Yes. Six horses. Mm -hmm. yes. She had five. She got another one recently. Max. Yes. I got another little pal. Actually, I got him back. That's I, the one you had out here at mm -hmm. Play Day? 
I had started his training and then I had given him to my brother's ex. Um, but and she kept him for a while and then she was going through a rough patch so she gave him back to me. Awesome. So you got six horses, so that keeps you busy. Yes. So now before we get into your you're 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 really busy with horse stuff for your age. I'm proud of that. Um, so, were you born in Flippin and all that? Been there your whole life, or were you from originally? I was born in Mississippi, and I really didn't have a good like beginning. But we moved around quite a bit, and then when I moved to Flippin, we had actually lived with my grandparents. I lived in their basement for the longest time, and we had gotten two horses to keep out on my aunt's property, which is now where I live. Um, and... Now, how old, how old were you when you moved up here? I was probably around four. Around four? Yeah. So your life started out in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. And, and then we went, I think we went to Chicago, and then we went to Kansas City for a few years. And then I think we moved down to Arkansas, and that's, I've been here since. So you started out kind of on a rough patch. Yeah. I just don't really like to bring that part up. Okay, that's no problem. We won't have to bring it up. Yep. And so, um, so you started out in flipping. Did you go to school for a while, or you always been homeschooled? Um, I went to Mountain Homeschools for like a long time. It's okay. Just give it up. Just, 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 just take a minute, okay? Yeah. All right. Just take a minute. That's why I say we've all got some stories, huh? Right. All got just, some hurts and stuff. Okay. That's okay. Just, just know this, when you get done tonight, there's going to be somebody you've encouraged. Because we've all been through some hard times. So just like Roy and Melanie was talking about their stories, and you've heard all the other people on Monday nights, your stories. Even Mike sitting right over there, he had a rough start, uh, some rough times in his life. And Chris and Becky sitting there tonight and others. So that's what makes this such a special night. It's because, you know, sometimes, you know what I've learned? Sometimes when you finally tell the story, it's like off of you. Oh, I just feel better. So, but we'll we'll just go on. So you got to flipping. Um, I went to flipping schools when I from preschool to second grade, and then I moved out to Mountain Home, and I got bullied for years out there. Bullied. Bullied. In Mountain Home. In Mountain you? Home. You were you I, as tall as you are now? Then? I was a little bit shorter, and I was not the prettiest, and I got bullied really, really bad. And at that time, I didn't know anything about Jesus, and so I just looked to my horses. But after. I think eighth grade, I moved back to Flippin, and I moved, I went back to Flippin schools, and things got better from there a little bit, but nothing got really better until I got saved. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. That's, that's, that's what we want better. you to be, is just honest. So horses have been a part of your life for a long time just to, just to help you with, through times. Yes. What is it about a horse? You know what Will Rogers says, right? You know who Will Rogers was? Oh my goodness! <laughs> we need to give her a history lesson. Um, I gotta get you a book on Will Rogers. He's a, he's an Okie classic. Mm -hmm. You know we're Okies. So Will Rogers says there's something about the outside of a horse that's good for the inside of us all. You'll have to remember that one now. There's something about the outside of a horse that's good for us or inside of us all. Mm -hmm. And it was, isn't it, for you? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It is very true. I think it's the fact that they teach you. That love and loyalty comes through actions and not words. Amen. Mm. And wow, they they teach you a lot of things in life, a lot of lessons that talking to people and stuff like nothing you can ever learn from talking to somebody. Wow, Randy likes to kiss their nose. Me too. You too. <laughs> yeah. You girls. And I I scratch their booties. <laughs> <laughs> Blaze gives he like Blaze will like back up to you doing it like this and then he'll like booty bump you for butt scratches. <laughs> You're funny. They all got different personalities. They do. Katrina's horses, she's got one out there, she scratches and he'll stick his head up and lip his lips up real funny and make funny lip noises and one he'll lift his leg up high and he's a he's a hoot. And uh, horses horses are cool. I mean I've had my same horse for 20 years. I mean, some people don't even keep a relationship that long. But um, Sam and I have just got an understanding. Something, you know, Katrina says she don't like to ride him because he's kind of like, mm, 
He's your horse, she says. And he is. And uh, and I've been very careful. I don't let anybody just ride my horse. And that's just a cowboy thing, though. You just don't let anybody ride your horse. And you really don't like, I don't really like anybody to ride my tack because they changed my stirrups and I don't want stuff changed on my stuff. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of like, I'm not the real like, oh, yeah, I'll just jump on my horse. No, I don't do that. And so uh, as you growed up, with horses, you've admitted that they've helped you, you know, through some times. You've had some struggles as a child and stuff, and things have been tough at times. And then everything got better when you came to Jesus. Yes, if I'm going to be honest, I have not had a really rough patch recently. Um, I've just followed him, and he's led me in the right direction so far. And you think uh, Barn and Cowboy Church has helped you? A 100%. I would not be where I am today without it. Well, without Barnum Cowboy Church, I would be sitting in my bedroom right now, and I would know nothing about Christ. Well, just because uh, some people came to Gary and said, let's do church in the dirt. I tell Katrina all the time, I said, you know, for 20-some years I've lived in this life to where I say, gosh, what if I would have said no to God after what's happened to all these people for Christ? You know, and that's something that I think that so many people take for granted Oh, well, God would have done it anyway. How do you know he would have? You know, that, that's a scapegoat to me. That's, that's, that's just junk. That's, that's garbage. I can't stand that kind of attitude because they don't want to take responsibility for their own life to, to be an influence to others, to encourage others, and they just want to write it off. And so, you know, you're telling your friends, and I'm going to tell you what, that takes courage. Mm -hmm. But you it know does. what makes it so awesome is that you can tell it's real with you. Because there's, there's an excitement about it. There's a joy inside of you. And Jesus says, my joy I give unto you that it, you know, that, that it lasts, it stays with you. And that's so many people today, they, you know, we see them go to the altar. They, oh, yes, yes. Well, two weeks, they're back at the beer joint or whatever else. And it, it, nothing, something didn't work. Yeah. And it wasn't my fault. Whose fault? Well, to me, I think they just didn't surrender. So you came to a place to say, I need this. And you opened your heart to God. And that's the key is you opened your heart to God. So I'm going to talk to you some more a little bit some of the ministries that you are part of. You come to Wednesday Night Lift. Who do you been bringing for that with you? Um, I have been bringing Tressa with me. And my sister has been coming as much as she can. And I used to bring two little girls, Katie and Katie. And they used to come with me every single week. Katie and Katie? Mm -hmm. Katie Are they sisters? Katie. Big, no. no. Big Katie, little Katie. Big Katie oh. and it's the big Katie. Katie and little Katie. Oh, the Katies. The Katies. Oh, okay. The Katie dids. Yes. Yeah, that's what. They, yes, I forget. Gosh, I haven't seen them in a little yeah. while. Yeah, they, so. they're having some rough patches right now. So we need to keep them in prayer. Yes, sir. Because they both prayed to receive Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we just need to encourage them. They've been baptized here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Both mm -hmm. of them. So. Yeah, both of them. I helped with Katie's baptism. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you did. So. Tell me about Wednesday Night Lift and Katrina, working with Katrina on Wednesday Night Lift with the messages. Uh, Katrina, she speaks just some things that, I mean, you can't get it nowhere else. And she says it straight how it is. And it doesn't matter if it's going to hurt your feelings or it's not what you like to hear. But it's what is what needs to be said for you to understand. And wow. she will, she's helped me a lot. She's help me and I'm sure a bunch of other kids know more than what we would have known without her. Congratulations. Isn't that nice? It is very nice. Thank you. Sometimes, you know, we need to be encouraged about, because, you know, preaching and teaching the Word of God, the true people that are doing the will of God. A lot of people are just doing what man wants. I'm not, you know, we're not going to do that here. We're going to do what God says. And that's not very favorable in the world that we live in today, you know. Uh, some people will get mad because, you know, well, you preached on hell and preached on this, preached on that. And I'm going to tell you what, you better, better toughen up and listen to what God's Word says. You know, uh, there's more written on hell in this Bible than there is heaven. I don't know if you knew that, but if you took all the hell out of this Bible, you'd have a Bible about that thing. People don't realize how important God says He wants you to know that there is a hell. Yes. And uh, because he doesn't want us to go there. And some people say, well, you're just trying to scare them. I hope it does scare you. Mm -hmm. Because it's a scary place to mm -hmm. be without God. Yes. And that's what hell is. It's completely a place without God. But we know that you have received Christ. Mm -hmm. or, you know, this is what's so cool, Megan. 
is there's evidence of your transformation, of your conversion. You've been transformed. Yes. Your mind is different. Your heart's different. Your speech is different. The evidence of the new tongue the Bible talks about. Now I'm still talking about stuff of the world. You talk to your friends about Jesus. Yes. You know how many people claim to be Christians that's not ever tells anybody about Jesus? More people than people that You've met them, haven't you? Oh, yes. I'm a Christian, but they yes. won't talk to you about Jesus, did they? No. They just talk about worldly things all the time. And it's never, I mean, I've heard, I've met a lot of people that are like, I'm a Christian, and, and not once have I heard Jesus come out of their mouth. Not once have I heard them talk about him or anything. And you've been, and you're around a lot of young people your age, and is Christianity something that you hear a lot about? Um, not, not truthfully, like, not honestly. Um, actually, I don't think there's very many people around me. That's why my friend group is so small is because I I had a friend group that was bigger and I hung out with a whole bunch of people but then I got into this church and I started coming here to this church and I, I started to see that they weren't really the people I needed in my life they were they were fake about like their religion they were fake about their belief and they weren't they weren't as true and like holy as I would like to be around wow wow so that's that's uh is that difficult sometimes uh seeing people like that i would i just pray for them and hope for the best i, Very good I if i'm gonna be honest there's so many people in this world that just need a prayer they just need that little bit of push and that little bit of help because there's i mean that's all i needed kind of like a 3-h ministries you know of roy melly hope health and happiness, happiness. Mm-hmm. You know, I love I love their ministry mm-hmm. work that they do, and and uh, you know they really you know during the spring roundup a week ago they really encouraged our church a lot because you know I love what you say. Well, if I'm going to be honest, well you better be honest. Well, <laughs> was it? Didn't you bring your niece out here one night, the first night, to the revival, the little one with the blonde hair? Oh, that was Paisley. Paisley. Paisley is a seven year old girl that I babysit. Yeah. She has never gone to church, not a day in her life. And you brought her to church. And I brought her here Friday when Melanie and Roy were here. Uh huh. And when we left that day, she begged me and her mama to come back here. So is they gonna come Wednesday nights? Uh, her mom does work, and it's only on nights that I have her. But I did bring her last Wednesday. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, I missed it. Yes, Darn she came it. with me last Wednesday. The she was, was on super vacation excited. with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, so she came out she on Wednesday back. night and she yes. liked it. Yes, she she did. And um, like I said, the Friday that was when she was like, "I've never been to church. I've I've never." She was like, "That was awesome. Like, can I please go back?" Well, that was the second night of the revival. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. on Friday night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that is cool. So, just, wow. Why did you want to bring her to church? Um, if I'm going to be honest, I wanted to bring her to church because I kind of got her into horses and stuff, and she's really, like, shy, and she has a good heart. She really does. She's a really sweet girl, and she has a good heart, and I feel like, like, kind of showing her the right, like, not forcing her upon the path, but showing her the path that would be nice for her to take is, I think it's awesome. (laughs) Like, younger generations. Showing her the path, not pushing her, not forcing her. I love... I sure hope there are so many adults listening to her tonight. Oh, my gosh, yes. I mean, uh, Roy and Melanie, you need to take her to Belize. And you want to go to Belize on a mission trip? I'm serious. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. You ought to go down there. You would love it. They are, you know, you would be perfect with the kids down there. And uh, Roy and Melanie will have to call you later after me, after this deal tonight. But, you know... Because, you know, what I want to do is, Katrina and I, we're, you know, we want to, we want to, we want you to come to the horse camp. And we're willing to, we're going to pay your way. And uh, because we want you to be in that environment and learn more from Randy and Frank and learn more about Christ. Because we know you have a desire for that in your life. But also, you know, as a pastor, my job is to equip saints. You're a saint of God. Mm Mm-hmm. You're a child of God. My job as your pastor is to equip you for ministry God's building for you. And we can kind of see where it is. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know, 
I know you got stuff to do in the summertime, but I'm sitting here thinking, you know, wow, wouldn't it be cool if bar none could create an internship program this summer for you to work with Katrina on the days that we work out here and to work with horses and to help with Wednesday night lift to where you're actually a worker and and other things that we do like tuesday night you know and stuff like that and we could actually give you a little help out for your fuel cost because you know i interned in a church for three years because they paid for my college and so part of that is i had to intern for a while and uh and so you know and that was the best education for me is working with my pastor i went you know going to bible college and seminary didn't make me who I am. God God did that. But the best example I had was my pastor because I, I saw the reality behind the scenes, what he had to deal with. And he's a great man. I still have his phone number. And every Sunday we're on our prayers together. And he's down in Florida. And, and he went down there and started a church uh, just on his own. He got tired of religion and stuff. And he got tired of man-made rules in churches and he just went to Naples, Florida God told him to go there, he planted a church and he's serving the Lord he doesn't have a bunch of people ruling him around and he's doing God's work and I'm proud of him for that because that's what God wanted him to do and uh, so you know that's something we ought to pray about something we talk to the church about is uh, you know God's got a plan for her it, he does and I want to help you go forward and I think it'd be great I mean, because, you know, you, the ministry is not about going to church. Ministry is everyday life for Jesus mm -hmm. in everything of our life. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do is a ministry of Christ. And, and so I'm just so encouraged by what you're saying tonight is uh, here you got this little girl, seven years old, and you wanted her because you could see something in her. Just like Katrina saw in you a long time ago. And she started investing and encouraging. And next thing you know, we're all like family now. And uh, and we want to do that to help you. And for Tessa back there. Tressa. Tressa. What do I call her? You can call her, her Tessa. Tr you know, it's Truffles or something. Whatever her name truffles. is. <laughs> so, but, she has uh, a new name, Truffles. Yeah. <laughs> Teresa, Tressa, same thing. <laughs> so, but we want to we want to invest in you older girls because, you know, you're 17 years old. You're going into the world. And Katrina and I just want to make sure you're going to be okay. We want to be there to help you. But we want to prepare you for some things. But, kiddo, you know, I listen to you talk. And that's why I think you said, I hope some adults are listening mm -hmm. to you. You got anything you want to add to that? No. Here we go. I'm trying. I'm trying. No. I mean, I just I just hope that the adults are listening to, to her and, and what's coming out of her, out of her mouth. Um, because no normal 17-year-old girl would say those things and it just shows that she's truly accepted jesus christ as her lord and savior and she wants to learn more and god has a on her on her journey and so he has a purpose for her so and i know that she'll find it because she's listening to him so so you're pretty proud of one of your gals right here aren't you i am yeah it's worth it isn't it honey mm -hmm. it all is. the headaches we deal with mm -hmm. in ministry it is it's worth it when we mm -hmm. see you know <coughs> so. she kind of helps me in class she kind of wrangles the kids in sometimes when they're being a little unruly so. well you're pretty tall you're like six yeah. foot tall yeah so to those little kids you know you're like well oh they're, my gosh. Not, they're not that little back up a lot oh, okay. well, <laughs> you know? it's it's pretty awesome because like even when she doesn't ask for help the kids look mm -hmm. at me and they're like yeah they're like hey uh -huh. megan and then i'm like let's do this and they're like okay yeah and it's it's awesome to see how much those kids look up to me yeah. and how much like I don't come one week and I got every single kid on my side hugging me yeah. being like where were you you were yeah. gone forever <laughs> <laughs> they do there's and several girls that come up to her they're they miss her when she's not here you're so. kind of a role model yes. to some of the younger mm -hmm. girls she is you know because you're kind of cool even you know? Easton and Riley were wondering where I was they're oh, like you were see? gone forever yeah. well they're boys you know yeah. <laughs> You gotta watch boys. Yeah. So, so you know, as you, as you know, this is this is cool. I mean, we're just sitting here, just visiting and talking about your life. So, do you, do you see yourself 
achieving these? Do you think your dreams are too big? You think God's able to make a way for you to have what these ideas? I feel like any um, anything's possible through Christ who strengthens me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians four thirteen. There we go. Well, Did she just quote scripture? She just quoted scripture. <laughs> Frank and Randy, aren't you proud? You know. So um, I learned that one on Tuesday night. Oh. They told me to memorize it. Who did? Yeah. Frank and Randy. R Frank and Randy told oh. you to memorize that scripture? Because I was having struggles with my horse. And they said, you can do anything through Christ who strengthens you. And they said, remember that. They are like, remember that every time. And on Sunday, I actually repeated that, that scripture right there to my horses repeatedly. You think they're going to get it, right? <laughs> That is awesome. That is awesome. So, wow. your dream is to kind of have a horse business. Yes, and I am going to be honest. I've been told multiple times that I'm not going to do it. But every time I tell someone that I'm done with that job because I got told I need a real job and I'm not going to be able to do it, something else pops up in that category. Something always comes to me to give me another chance at it. It's like right as I go to give up on it, something just like throws it in my face like, you you got to do this. This is what you're. This is what you're meant to do. Wow. Like I was I was working a mare out in Oakland, and my mom had told me that I needed to kind of wrap that up and quit. And then the mare ended up having hip problems, so I did stop because I wouldn't. I don't work horses. I get hurt. But that was kind of where I was like, it's gonna end here. Like this is gonna be the end of it. And now I have two horses that I work out in Clark Ridge, and I have a lesson, and I have a possible another lesson coming. I was getting my hair cut, and the lady started talking to me, and so she might, her son might be coming out for lessons now. Awesome. Well, and, and you know, and, and you do watch our horses sometimes when we're gone. So, mm -hmm. and did you watch somebody else's in the church? Uh, Miss Debbie. Yes, and yeah, Debbie, Debbie. DeFries. Yeah. I used to yeah. watch her two horses yeah. when uh, mm -hmm. the entire time her husband yeah, so was in the hospital. So she takes care of. And I think even Chris and Becky have talked to you about if they go somewhere, they may need you to take care of their mm -hmm. stuff for them. And, mm -hmm. you know. She's very trustworthy. She's here, yeah. when she's, she's here when she says she is, and she always stays longer. Make sure everything gets brushed and taken care of and of left on. <laughs> they put yeah. so much time and effort into me. It's not like I can't put the same into them. <laughs> Whether they're my horse or not, they put so much time and effort into us. Well, we need Christian horse people. Mm -hmm. We do. Yes. We do. We do. Because, you know, mm -hmm. through that, as you've already displayed to us, you know, through your horses, they bring comfort to people. I was thinking about therapeutic writings. Have you ever thought of that idea? I, if I'm going to be honest, I honestly have. I've thought about starting a, like, um, therapy group for, like, kids in need or, like, even, like, people. Just I've seen people that have, like, they come to horses and then they slowly, like, that helps them, like, all the time with everything mm -hmm. and so if I'm gonna be honest that's actually one of my things as I get older I was wanting to start out with writing lessons and stuff and then if once I have like everything set up I would want to do like a therapy like a horse therapy place it would be really nice you know they have a school for that so you can get certified yeah I was gonna do it yeah Katrina's even looked into but I had to be gone for a few months yeah it was time so um well, as as you know, Barnard Cowboy Church Ministries grow, you know, with our arena and the different things that we're looking into growing the arena ministry now, because you know we've got the Word of God moving so well in the church part of the you know the different services we do and focused around the teaching of God's Word. This night, tonight, like tonight, for people to share their story about how Jesus has changed their life, kind of like the song we played tonight is uh, the new song we're going to do for a while. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that saved my soul. And uh, and that's really what this night's about. And this is a great outreach because we're reaching so many people with everybody's individual stories mm -hmm. so that everybody doesn't feel like, it, you know, they're the only one that's in that place. And so with you being a 17-year-old young, year young lady, uh, you've got to be an encouragement to the older generation, too, that, wow, there's still hope out there because there's some young people that's got it. You're going to carry the cross on for us when we're gone, see. And so as we start looking at more ministry out here, one of the things I would like to entertain to our church, maybe in another year or so, 
is one of the things I've really wanted to do is try to reach our veterans through a horse ministry. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that for we like have three had years. A, about having about a therapeutic years. program mm -hmm. that for our remote. veterans because yeah. those men and women who have given everything mm -hmm. for this country, yep. we need to give them the cross mm -hmm. of Christ Jesus. We need to love them and help them. That's why I was going to go to that school, but it was so far away. Yeah, and so that's something that, you know, that I've really looked into. Um, Ron McQuillan and I have talked about it, and there's a gentleman in Little Rock through the dis, uh, DA, the dis, how do you say that, DAV? DAV. Disabled. Disabled uh, yeah. American Veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked me if we would consider... <laughs> doing a program for disabled veterans here f with horses and i said yes and he said if you would want to do that we would help you so but well, that could be something you could get involved in with horses i mean mm -hmm. the therapy and stuff so that maybe that's something that we're going to do down the road together you know is start and maybe god's going to use you to help bring that wouldn't that be kind of cool that would be awesome because we need to you know as one of the things I see consistent in your story, you care about people. Yes, sir. Any specific reason why do you feel that is? Because there's, you can look at someone and you can see how they look on the outside, but you don't ever know what that person went through. And you don't ever know what that person had behind their story. And you don't ever know what they're going through. And so just kind of treat everybody how you'd want to be treated. And I've always... And I know it's very likely that most people around would have a bad story behind them. And I was bullied and no one ever looked to see that in me. And so I just try to look around at all the people around me and try to see that everyone's different and everyone has a different story. And you just treat them like a person and not an object. Wow. And, you know, we wonder why, when we get older, God allowed us to go through the junk we went through. But now I think we understand that he didn't abandon us. He allowed us to learn so that we could help somebody. Yes. You know, because I, I grew up pretty bad deal as a kid, too. And uh, others have, too. And uh, the one thing that I look back, because, you know, I've said, I thought, why would God allow me to go through what I went through? One thing that's made me very independent. My focus is just God nobody else and uh, you know I didn't have a father you know I had a stepfather but that's not the same not one that they don't want to be and uh, but uh, it, it made me re when I when I came to believe and trust in God and my trust in Jesus for my salvation I found a heavenly father that loved me that I never had before and it changed my life and it made me to the person I am today is my devotion to him you know, because even in, when I quit the ministry several years ago, uh, just burn out, just problems, just things. And uh, I just quit. I didn't quit going to church. I didn't quit God. I just quit being a pastor because uh, I was broken. I was down. Uh, just stuff, you know. And uh, but God, God was still with me. And... Uh, and that's that's the thing I don't think people realize is, you know, some people act like they've never had a rough day in their life. I think that's a fake, because we've all got a story, right? Of sure. some hard times, and I think maybe God puts those hard times in our lives so that maybe we would look to Him. That's what I was gonna say. If I'm a be, I always say if I'm a be. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. But that's actually what I was gonna say. I was gonna say that. I feel like God put all those things in my life that he put in my life and like he put certain people in my life to show me where to be and where not to be and he put certain things like certain things that had happened there as like I think he tried to get me to come to him then and I just didn't know where to go and I didn't know nothing about it. Because like I said, my household was not religious. It was not religious at all. We never even spoke about God, none of that. And Better I now? Feel like, yeah. I feel like me and my dad actually sit down. He, he used to go to a Catholic church growing mm -hmm. up, but me and him sit down all the time now and we talk about stuff. And That's cool. So That's me great. and him sit at the kitchen table and he lets me come like back to his room and stuff and talk to him. And That's cool. I always tell him about Wednesday night, and every time I come to church, I always tell him about it. 
So is he encouraged by that? He's encouraged by it. Um, he is one that was raised off of you don't have to go to church to believe mm -hmm. and to be a follower. Like you, you can follow God and you can follow Christ, but I like being involved and I like hearing more and learning more every day that I come here. Okay, awesome. That is awesome. Wow, we're getting close to our. It's, it's, look at it, it's almost over. Yeah, <laughs> she was so nervous tonight. She's never been on camera. You're doing before. great. You're doing great. <laughs> you are doing a great job. And you know, um, I asked you if you had a verse of scripture, and you said it was John three sixteen is is something that. But gosh, here you are quoting Philippians four thirteen to me a while ago. So for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right. Yes, sir. What is that? There's something special in that to you, you think, or? Uh, that was not only was it the first verse that I learned when I got saved, but it also that's where my my strong belief comes from. Is I mean, you can't look at her and be like, "Would you put your only child on the cross?" She wouldn't do it. I mean, she loves everybody around her, but she wouldn't do that. And that's where my belief started to get stronger and stronger was when I heard that verse right there. About how much God loved you that he put his son on the cross And I wasn't showing him love. I wasn't loving him the way he loved me from before he knew what I would go through and what I would do. I didn't love him the way he loved me through it all. So you made a decision to put your love to God. Yes, sir. To love him with all your heart. Wow. That's a commandment, you know, from Jesus. Was it John, let me think, 13, 35, a new commandment I give unto thee, that you love one another as I have loved you. Isn't that awesome? Yes, sir. So that is amazing. Well, I always give my guests the, the final words here about if there's anything that you would like to share with someone tonight that may be listening to you that's going through a hard time as a kid, maybe with parents divorced or whatever things that could be or maybe a kid sitting around thinking about I don't know what to do with my life tonight is there anything that you would like to say to them um I'm gonna put it this way I was that kid I was that kid that I didn't know what to do or where to go and I didn't find where to do or what to do or where to go until I came to Christ and you don't have to just jump right into it Actually, I kind of stalled doing it, and you just, it's when you know that something's got to change, and he'll give you that good change, that positive outlook in your life, and most kids nowadays, they're all depressed and things like that, but if you have God in your life and you can look to him in those moments, and you could ask him where to go and what to do, he'll give you the way, and he'll show you what to do, and he won't let you go down the wrong path if that's not what you're meant to do. He'll guide you, he, he says. Will, he will guide you. He will guide you through every step of the way. Amen. Very good, Megan. <laughs> Thank you. That's very good. What do you think, crew? You proud of this? Huh? Yeah. Wow. And uh, I'm sure that later on we'll have you back sometime. You can give us a refresher <laughs> meeting and tell us more about what's going on in your life. But if you're watching tonight... And maybe you're a child or, or an adult right now, and you just don't know what to do with your life. Listen to what Megan said. Just come to, to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you don't have to be at church to do that. You just got to be at a place to say, I'm ready to make a change in my life. And God, I can't do it. And so if you're there tonight and you need help, call Barnum Cowboy Church. We have a phone number there on the screen. And Miss Kimberly Ann will guide you and help you. She can, she has a great ministry of her own in our church that she can tell you exactly how to come to Christ. She can help you. And if she, you need to get with me, she'll make an appointment where we can get together. But, you know, so look at this young lady and see that there is hope for America today because we have young people like this at Barnum Cowboy Church. And I'm so proud of this church is that it is reaching your generation. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of my wife because... I love what she said. She gets a bird, she preaches, and she may tell you what maybe you don't want to hear, but you know you needed it, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but, so, we're so glad that you tuned in to Monday Night Fire here at Barnum Cowboy Church, 
and you know i'm trying to think if i if i just wanted to share something special uh i love i just love your enthusiasm mm -hmm. you're, you're you're nice to be around you're not like a you know, like somebody <laughs> baptized in pickle juice. You know, you know, you're always smiling. <laughs> Katrina talks about how much you help her, with her with the kids. You've got good friends back there with Trussles or whatever her name is. <laughs> Trussle, you know. Now it's Trussles. And, now she uh, has a different name. So Truffle or Trussles or something. <laughs> and uh, But she's a cute girl back there. She, and you got some good friends that come with you. And and uh, we're just really proud of you, Megan. And I hope you're proud of this young lady, too. You got some comments about this? tonight be sure and send them out there to us and Roy and Melanie we miss you and uh, we'd like to see you back soon and uh, so you want to go to Belize yes we we'll hear that Roy awesome. Melanie she says she'd like to go to Belize send us a packet so send us a packet of how we can get her hooked up maybe do a summer trip with you guys this year I, Roy and Melanie's watching because they already said that watching and um, they have ways to help you get be able to go can you fly an airplane okay? I don't know. I've never done it. <laughs> and that. But so anyway, uh, because one of the things I want to do at Bar None this year is I want to set up a mission ministry to start going and working with uh, Roy and Melly and Belize through our church. I'm looking for. I'm praying that God will raise up a couple in our church that would want to do mission work. Because I tell you what, there's nothing like doing. I've got to do some mission trips in my life. Not just in the United States. I haven't gone overseas. But it, I went to some Indian reservations and stuff. And I've, and some of those are like a third world country, sadly. And they're good people. They just need hope. And that's what Roy and Melanie mm -hmm. bring is they bring hope through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And through that hope, they start getting healthy. Mm -hmm. And as they get healthy, they get happy. Yep. And that's the key to all happiness is when you got your health mm -hmm. and your hope is in Christ, man, you don't need money. You got yeah. the greatest gift of all, and that's Christ. Yeah, because He heals you of everything that's happened to you in your past and all of that. So we'll see if we can get that worked out. Mm -hmm. But be in prayer for us too as we do this. So we're looking for that a ministry couple to come part of Barnum Cowboy Church to work with Roy Melney and and ministry over in Belize. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. So you would like to go? Yeah. I think you'd be great with the kids over there. <laughs> don't you? Mm -hmm. Don't you, yeah. Roy and Melanie? So are they talking back? Uh, yes, I'm reading all their. <laughs> <laughs> So for you watching and you don't maybe know who Roy Melly are, Roy's my little brother. <laughs> you know, his wife said me and him have so much in common. And I've actually kind of missed him lately. He's not like here. And I was listening to that song Sunday night that you Lord, did. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. And we did that song Sunday night at the invitation time and stuff and, and our, in our Sunday night service. And I was sitting there thinking about Roy because he sang that. And I thought, man, I wish Roy was here, you know. So... Uh, it's fun. You know, one of the things about being a Christian, you meet some of the greatest people in the world. I mean, just in this room tonight, I got some great family in this room tonight. They're just family to us. And that's what's cool. This is your church family, isn't it? Yes. And your grandma and grandpa. Oh, yeah. And then your Uncle Mike. <laughs> you know, there's Uncle Mike. You know, Aunt Kimberly. You know. Yeah. Now, this is the other grandparents over here. Right? Uh, so, and there's some more. But, and that's what you have here, you know. Is this the people of this family. church love you? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I love them all the same. I know I mean, you do. Every, everybody has become a part, big part of my life. And that's the key to a church, is that you can come here and feel loved, mm -hmm. and you find that here at Barnum, didn't you? Yes. At first, I felt like an outcast, and <laughs> now I feel like I fit right in with everybody. Wow! And you know, we had some people tell us the other day that they came to this church years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is, and now they're here now. And they said this is not the church it was, yep. and they said they didn't feel welcomed before, but now they feel like family here. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I can say is praise be to God right. for His love. Yep. Yes. Amen. 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 Let's pray as we close out here. Let's thank the Lord, Father. We thank you, Lord, for tonight, mm -hmm. and we thank you, Lord, for Megan and her story. And we continually we just want to see you continually add to her story, Father, mm -hmm. as she follows you. Bless mm -hmm. this young lady. And may she be a great instrument of your grace and mercy to everyone she meets, as she already is. And I thank you, Lord, for her ministry tonight, that she already has a ministry with you, and she's doing mm -hmm. it. Bless her, keep her safe, prosper her life that gives you glory, Father. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for all you do 
through our church, through the ministries of this church, and what you do through Christ in us, the hope of glory. We thank mm -hmm. you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thanks for mm -hmm. tuning in tonight. Next week we'll have another guest, and be sure and tune in, and you'll be glad you did. God bless you all. See you next week.